Major developer that is seeking creditor protection, over $700 million in debt. Talking about Coromandel Properties and what's happening there. Joining us to talk about why this is so concerning is Angela Calla, who is a mortgage expert, also the host of The Mortgage Show on this radio station and also with Dominion Lending Centres. Angela, thanks so much for making some time today. Oh, you're welcome, Jill. Uh, We're still learning more details about this. Uh, I'm looking at some of the details in a Vancouver Sun story. I know other media outlets are are reporting on this as well. Uh, But when you look at what we know so far about uh, this company, this very large development company uh, going, uh, getting creditor protection, what do you know about this or what is your reaction? Uh, First and foremost, when you are purchasing a pre-sale, the most important due diligence that you can do is very thorough review of the disclosure statement. The disclosure statement is something that the developer gives you to review, which lays out the terms of the contract and what the developer has right the rights to do and the time clauses that are within that. And when you are purchasing a pre-sale, you purchase a pre-sale that has generally speaking, not broken ground yet and will be done within a certain amount of years. That could be as little as, you know, four to six months, Jill, or it can be maybe five years in the future. So when you're personally planning on if you are going to make a pre-sale purchase, this is one of the considerations that you have to have is you have to understand very clearly what the terms and time clauses are because that gives the developer what deliverables have to be done within that period of time. And so in order now for the developer to change the disclosure statement, um, this will have to be you know, reviewed uh, by a judge to potentially break contracts. And in this province, British Columbians are very well protected. And the deposits that they've placed down on the pre-sale will range based on the specifications that are within the terms of that disclosure statement. And they may have placed down 5% of the purchase price as an example or 10% of the purchase price, and that amount is held in trust. So all British Columbians are protected by that Trust Act, and for whatever reason, they could, if they selected to, uh, work to get a release from that if both parties agree and get their deposits back, or if the developer hasn't met the clauses within there, they can get their deposit back, or if this project simply is not going to proceed for the cost in which those borrowers locked their cost in for when they made that pre-sale purchase, they may get to a point, depending on if partners can come to the table and how the restructuring looks. So that could go several different ways. But if it does get pushed into you know, receivership, as an example, and they determine that they have to sell these these homes at a higher price, then those purchasers would get their deposit back and potentially the choice if they wanted to, to buy at whatever the cost is. And then that is reviewed by the receivership process. And, you know, we had this back. uh, Riverbend is a Coquitlam project that went into receivership. This is not new to the province. We have seen this before. Um, And it is very sad to see this happening because we need these homes. And if these homes and projects get canceled, um, then that just leaves less places for people to rent or own in a time where we already have 1.5 million immigrants coming here within the next three years. And the number of that, too, that I was reading about this saying that the potential of these sites, they could have generated about 2,000 new homes, condominiums, rental, social housing units as well, all that have been proposed and planned in this development. Uh, there was also a line where the the company uh, made the point or uh, they, they said there was insufficient cash flow to complete some of the projects, but also put the blame on the city of Vancouver it, saying that the city of Vancouver has extremely expensive and Mm -hmm. slow approval processes that are at least, Mm -hmm. it says, partly at fault for the firm being in this precarious situation. Is that fair? Do you think that is a fair comment? Well, absolutely. If we're going to move a lot of housing through, we have to make it easier because look at what can happen in the economy. Our local government can't control what happens globally and inflation going through the roof. Interest rates have gone up over 4% in that time period. So, you know, development is many things, but easy 